Hey, I'm Scott and welcome back to my shop. Uh, today, I'm gonna show you how I made this really cool stopper. And it's got a, uh, a large stainless steel stopper on it from stainless bottle stoppers sized specially for whiskey bottles. So if you wanna see how I made this, keep watching. All right, for this project, I'm gonna be using this uh, blank it's about two by two by two and three quarter and I made this uh, yesterday and it's just uh, some brown Mally burl and you can kind of see it in here right kind of see it in here and um, aluminite resin so it's a blue and a pearl mix so we'll see what the pattern looks like when we turn it but uh I'm gonna put this in a chuck. I'm gonna to need to drill a hole in the bottom here. All right, so here we have the blank up in the chuck. I'm gonna to need to drill a half inch hole in the bottom here for a brass insert for the stopper. But the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna just taper this down a little bit um, and just make it a little bit concave. And that way when I screw the stopper into the insert, the edges of the stopper will fit flush on the outside of the, um, the stopper itself. All right, so let's get that done. All right, here you can see I have the tool rest in place and I have it set up so my gouge is gonna be about right on center. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut a little bit of a depression in here or make it concave and let's get that done. I got the lathe speed is about like 1200 ish. All right. All right, so you can see that's a little bit concave. I'm going to take the point of a skew and I am just going to. Make the center hole more defined. All right, and that's gonna act as a guide for the drill bit. I'm gonna take a half inch uh, Forstner bit and um, drill a hole right there. All right, here you can see I have this half inch Forstner bit in my uh, um, drill chuck that's mounted into my tailstock. And I'm just gonna drill a hole. I got a mark here with a Sharpie that's gonna mark my depth. And I'm gonna drill up to that depth and that, uh, should give me enough room to get that brass insert um, installed. I'm gonna turn the lathe speed down to about 400-ish. And uh, let's get that hole drilled. Okay, so now I'm just gonna test fit that and make sure that this uh, brass insert will fit in there um, flush or slightly countersunk. So, there we go. Pretty much a perfect fit. I'm gonna take that out of there because we're gonna need to put in some five minute epoxy to make that permanent. All right, so here you can see I'm over at my uh, bandsaw. I'm kind of pressed for space. Shop's a bit of a mess. So we're gonna use the bandsaw table and I put down this notepad. I always mix my um, um, five minute epoxy on this notepad. I mix it up and then I tear the sheet off and throw it away. So I've got a fresh surface every time and these notepads are pretty cheap. So we're gonna use some regular old five minute epoxy. All right, you can see we have about equal amounts of A and B. So we're just gonna mix that up and I'm just using a uh, craft stick or a non-sterile tongue depressor. All right, that should be mixed up thoroughly enough and you can see my tongue depressor, I snapped off a piece and here's the piece I snapped off. And that's so I can work some of this epoxy into the hole. All right, so I'm just gonna scoop up a little bit of epoxy 
and I'm just gonna coat the walls. Right, I'm gonna do about the best I can, and there we go. And then I'm gonna take some epoxy and I'm gonna put it into the knurls of this brass insert. And you can see I'm only going about three quarters of the way up because there's gonna be a little bit of squeeze out. All right, so that's got that pretty much filled in. And let me move this pad out of the way. All right, and I'm just gonna insert the brass insert into the hole. Okay, I'm gonna take a paper towel and just get rid of any of that extra squeeze out. Now, if any epoxy got into the threads, it's not a problem. I have a tap that's the same as the threads on the insert, so I'll just clean that out later. But now we have to let that sit for an hour. All right, that's a five minute epoxy, has a five minute working time, but a one hour cure time, so we're gonna have to let that sit for an hour before we can finish the project. And in case anybody's wondering what I use to insert that insert, this is uh, one of Stainless Bottle Stoppers um, Honey Dippers. And I kind of gummed up the threads on this a while ago, so now I use this basically as a tool to insert that, um, the brass insert into all my projects that use that insert. Well, we waited an hour and uh, I turned the video on, but I forgot to turn my microphone on, so we're gonna have to deal with some voiceover. So here you can see the blank, it has the insert glued in place. Um, and now I just have to mount it on the lathe. To get this blank mounted on the lathe, I'm gonna use this universal mandrel. It's made by stainless bottle stoppers. Uh, it's, as you can see, it screws right onto the spindle of the lathe. One of the cool features of this universal mandrel is you can see it has this small post. Um, and that's actually sized for that honey dipper. And stainless bottle stoppers will um, sell you individual bushings that will fit over that post. Um, and those bushings are for different size objects. You know, obviously this is the bottle stopper size um, and they have various sizes for various projects. So you might want to check out their website. All right, now I'm getting ready to screw this on the mandrel. So I'm just going to screw it on, snug it up and uh, we should be ready to turn. Here you can see I got the tool rest in place, just checking for clearance. And uh, I got the tail stock up for support. And we're gonna just switch the machine on and get ready to go. The first step here is to round these corners over. So what I'll be using is a spindle roughing gouge. pattern in that resin is really nice so I'll just be giving this a simple shape uh, something more traditional and let that resin speak for itself I'm going to turn the bottom here close to the bushing and once I'm happy with the final shape I'll come back later and clean it up and take it right up to the bushing so it fits on the stopper perfectly I have the basic shape I want so now it's time to finish up that bottom and get that right up to the bushing and the stopper itself is just a bit long, so I'll be trimming that down as well. And there's a slight taper from the widest point at the bottom uh, towards the top. So it gets narrower at the top, so I'll be taking on quite a bit of that resin away uh, just to get the height of that stopper to where it looks good to me. I 
I'm happy with the height I have here. So it's time to take that tailstock away and work on removing that little nub that's on the end of the stopper. I've been using a spindle gouge to shape the top of this piece uh, for the most part and now you'll see I'm using the lower wing on that same spindle gouge uh, to take away that nub and that does a pretty good job but you also there's alternative methods you could use so you could also use a round nosed um, scraper with a negative rake uh, you could also use a carbide tool um, and my carbide tool has a negative rake uh, cutter in it and you can compare all three and see which method works best for you. So now the piece is ready for some sanding and some finishing. I'm going to start out with sanding. Uh, start out with 120 grit Abernet and I am going to sand that smooth and then move on to the 180. After the 180 grit, I'm going to do something that might seem a little bit unusual. I'm going to coat the wooden area of this piece with some CA glue. So the idea here really is just to use that CA glue as a finish. As you can see, I have the lathe speed slowed way down. And I'm just going to coat that wooden area with some CA glue. Uh, I just want to seal the wood. I want to keep as much of that glue off the resin area as possible. And I'm using a very thin CA glue here, so it'll soak into the wood as deep as it possibly can go. Hopefully that'll seal up this wood. Uh, it seems to work pretty well for me. Um, if you want to, give it a shot. So let that spin on the lathe until it's dry. And then once it's dry, I'm going to sand that back with some 240. I'm going to make sure I take some, uh, some care to get that CA glue completely off the resin. Sand that down so it's gone. And once I'm done, I'm going to do that process all over again. I have the lead speed turned down again. And here we are, ready to go on for coat number two of CA glue. We're just going to put it on very carefully. Only go up as high as we have to to get it into the wood. Try to keep it off the resin as much as possible. We really just want to seal the wood and get a good coat of that glue on there. And then we're just going to let the lathe spin and let it dry. Now that that's dry, I'll move on to the next grit, which is 320. And then after I sand with 320, sand with 400 and then finish up with some 600 grit. The next part of the finishing process here is to uh, use some Triple E Ultra Shine. It's a polishing paste and uh, it'll remove all those scratches. The Triple E will break down as it's polishing to a finer and finer and finer grit and it'll leave a pretty decent finish before we're done but we're going to take it one step further after that. So here we are at the final step here. We're going to do a, uh, a little bit of buffing and we're going to break that down into two sections. We're going to first buff with some uh, Triple E compound uh, using a buffing wheel that's on the lathe and I have the lathe speed set at about uh, 12 to 1500 RPM for this buffing operation. And once the Triple E is done, we'll move on to a white diamond buffing wheel and we'll buff up the piece and you'll see that'll leave a very smooth glass-like finish on that resin. You can see the, uh, the brass left a little bit of black mark on my wheel, but here's the piece all polished up and that came out really nice. All right, so the hardware we're going to be using is made by uh, stainless bottle stoppers. And you can see this is one of their wine bottle stoppers. And this one is for whiskey bottles. You can see it's, you know, significantly larger. It's got extra O-ring. The O-rings are much bigger. Um, the nice thing is, is that the threads are the same and the top's the same. So turning stuff will all work the same. And, you know, it's got a flat end, so it'll stand up. So let's just get that installed. 
and we'll take a look. There you go. I think they came out pretty nice. Next thing's to try it in a whiskey bottle. Well, there you go. You got a really nice bottle stopper uh, made from some brown Mally Burl, some Alumilite resin colored blue and pearl, and some hardware. Yeah, specially sized for whiskey bottles from stainless bottle stoppers. So I hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button for the video. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next time on Scott's Mini Woodshop. Have a great one.